to spoil or not to spoil? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer spoilers for the movie Last Action Hero or to take arms against the sea of troubles. I pick trouble. Welcome to Diabolical, the show where four long-suffering friends dissect film's most dastardly schemes and try to improve them. I'm your host, Adam, and this week's film is Last Action Hero. So, dear listeners, rubber baby buggies bumpers, let's get diabolical. <laughs> Greetings, and welcome to this week's pod. Joining me, as always, are my friends and fellow podcasters in their guise as the panel of peril. So, chaps, please introduce yourselves, and in your very, very best Arnold impression, tell us your favourite line from any of his movies. Craig here, a.k.a. as Countacular. My favourite Arnold Schwarzenegger line from my favourite performance of his, I think it's a deeply charismatic performance. What's the matter, Dylan? CIA got you pushing too many pencils? <laughs> it's a classic it sounds like a simpsons line at this point doesn't it yeah yeah what's he called mcbain yeah that's it yeah. that probably is the one i say most of all and i think a lot of people say yeah it. especially it's it's kind of kind of like a good work quote to say when somebody's knackered right. at work <laughs> what's the matter cia got you pushing too many pencils <laughs> so many great lines in predator <laughs> <laughs> While we're on the subject, I read that Last Action Hero is based on McBain. There you go. No, seriously, I read that. Yeah. Yeah. The screenwriters said that they'd seen The Simpsons. They thought if they can do the parody of it and do a parody that transcends parody and becomes good mm. again, let's see if we can do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. My favorite quote is from probably my favorite performance of his, and it's, I'm a cop, you idiot! I've detected John Kimball <laughs> from <laughs> Kindergarten Cop. For his performance, I think he, he just nails it. It's brilliant. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm Ben. And my favorite Arnold line was the same as Cantatacular's, but I have a backup. <laughs> Crush your enemies. See them driven before you and hear the lamentation of their women. <laughs> That's what I assumed yours would be. Yeah. It is a good one, that, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That one is probably one of the first Arnold films that I can remember. And then it's that that line is the one that stays with you. And and of course, crumb. <laughs> it's great. I remember feeling very uncomfortable watching that with my family when he has sex with a witch. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and just, very uncomfortable. You're sort of sitting there looking from side to side going, <laughs> okay. Zamora, Zamora. <laughs> ingrained in my mind <laughs> that obviously comes up quite frequently doesn't it with a lot of films and what i found is it makes you a lot more comfortable if you just get it out and just uh give it give it a squeeze <laughs> and say how do you do calm you right down <laughs> <Squish and squeeze>. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right i'll do that and if anyone questions it i'll just say countacular told me <laughs> in the mental asylum countacular told me to do it he told me he told me to give it a squeeze in front of everybody <laughs> Count Attackular in the room with us now. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I'm Gaz, and my favourite Arnold line is actually in this film, but I'll save that for later. And instead, mm. I will go for his final line to Sharon Stone in Total Recall, where oh. he simply says, consider that the divorce after he shoots her to death. <laughs> 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 In Last Action Hero, young film fan Danny Madigan is gifted a magical golden ticket that enables him to cross onto the silver screen and meet his movie idol, Jack Slater, played by Hollywood icon Arnold Schwarzenegger. The rules in the movie land are very different and Danny sets out on an adventure with Slater to foil glass-eyed nemesis Benedict. When Benedict gets hold of the magic ticket and starts wreaking havoc in the real world, Jack and Danny must get back to prevent the carnage at the world premiere of Jack Slater 4. One of the biggest franchises in history, featuring four A-listers bantering aimlessly about whether they like a film or not, returns once again. Yes, folks. Yeah, Omer. 
is back for yet another big screen outing. So, can I have a year or mayor for these films of 1993? What's eating Gilbert Grape? Never seen it. No, me neither. Yeah, I have seen bits of it. Yeah. I remember that Leonardo DiCaprio does a what would now be considered a quite insensitive portrayal of a person with learning difficulties. Mm-hmm. I remember Paul Calf talking about it and Steve Coogan's live show saying, What's eating Gilbert Scrape? Ooh, I'm all sad someone's eating a great fuck off. <laughs> 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 Fucking student paying for a bag of chips with a check. <laughs> <laughs> I love Paul Calf. Bring back Paul Calf. Uh, much ado about nothing. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. It's got a good cast, doesn't it? It's Billy got Crystal. an amazing, amazing yeah. cast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Billy yeah. Crystal's in it, yeah. Ken <laughs> Reeves. Yeah. He's so fucking good, in it? Much ado about never seen it. Uh, wow. <laughs> Wayne's World 2. Yeah. 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 Uh, and last but not least, Fearless. I feel like I've seen it on TV, like, you know, Channel 4, Half 12, Jobby. Yeah. I've not seen it. Never seen it? No. No, no, neither have I, but I just thought I'd, 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 I'm trying to bring up films that maybe one or two of us might have seen and the rest and sort of... Yeah, it makes for good content, doesn't it, when, when we all go, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like to plug a film from 1993. Go on then. Go back and listen to Jurassic Park in our back catalogue. There's some crazy plans. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, my. They're nuts. What, film as well? Yeah, the film's okay. The plan's, though. My plan's the best. (laughs) (laughs) So, let's take a dive into the film. Gaz, does Last Action Hero make you feel like you have a golden ticket... Or a one-way ticket to hell? Uh, yeah, I'd say it makes me feel like I've got a golden ticket. It's good. It's a lot of fun. It's just it's stretched a bit thin for me. Mm. Two hour, ten film on this premise. It's like, get it get it yeah. down to 90 minutes. You've sort of blown mm. most of your big jokes for me within about the first 40 minutes. And they're struggling to catch up. Like, for example, I think the reveal of the animated cat partner voiced by Danny DeVito would have hit a lot better Mm. if you didn't just see him a lot earlier on in a throwaway gag Mm. space things out a bit more Mm. because it's it's all just like hit him with every gag you can instantly Mm. best gags for me are things like charles dance being the villain with the 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 trend at Mm. the time to get a british theatrical actor to play the villain in a blockbuster yeah that's a good well-worn trope because they couldn't get alan rickman yeah he's basically playing (laughs) alan rickman isn't he well they wanted alan rickman Mm. and they couldn't get him oh they did Oh, okay. Yeah. They wanted Alan Rickman to play Alan Rickman. That'd have been ideal. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it is fun. Uh, but yeah, it's just goddamn. It's way too long. Way too long. Yeah, I, I found myself looking looking at the clock and saying, mm. "Oh, how much more has this got left?" Sort of thing. So it's odd, isn't it? Because typical action films do they go on two hours? I suppose these days they do, don't they? Everything's quite bloated nowadays isn't it yeah some of them are yeah uh, okay. well this had uh, a high concept to set up as well mm. you know it's not just an action film it's a it's a fantasy film it's a kid's film it's juggling a lot of plates mm. spinning a lot of plates <laughs> no, no. <laughs> spinning would be more elegant than what they're doing here <laughs> spinning a lot of chainsaws <laughs> yeah <You're right. laughs> ben yeah, I mean, I would agree with Gaz. I said mostly it's a successful satire that leans into all the right action tropes and has a lot of fun with them. Again, there are plenty of laugh out loud moments and great cameos. But then, yeah, on the other side of it, I think the plot hangs by a very literal thread. <laughs> and mostly yes. you can forgive it because it's a parody. But then I felt like the ending was Sir Ian McKellen popping up as death it felt a bit like a lazy cop-out like even for a comedy yeah you know they had the whole of cinematic history to play with promises a lot and doesn't deliver 
Yeah, and then they chose death to just like hand the hand the ending over a little bit too cheaply. Yeah, like teasing King Kong and Dracula and all sorts, and then not delivering on them. It's like, oh, that's a bit disappointing. Dracula. <laughs> yeah, mm. exactly. Dracula could have come out and gone. Danny, I want to suck your blood, but instead I'm going to tell you where the ticket is. I want to fuck your blood. Yeah, I just felt a, a bit of a wasted opportunity. I want to fuck your mom. All things considered, <laughs> it earns a watch it if you've got a bit of time. Preferably just over two hours. Yeah. yeah. If you've got a bit of time, watch it. That's the rating, I guess, from me. <laughs> okay. Very good. Count Yeah, absolutely in line with everything said there. I feel it's a hugely underrated film because obviously it got panned and didn't, you know, Arnold famously was very upset about it. And it deserves to be one of those films that's remembered nostalgically by kids who were the right age to catch it. There's a, a lot of fun stuff in it, a lot of fun stuff. But again, for me, the concept is really under delivered. You could have had so much more fun with this film than they did. So yeah, it's a, kind of a solid three out of five. Mm. Yeah, I'd go with that three out of five. Yeah, I would echo exactly those thoughts. I thought it's a good spoof, but yeah, it didn't go far enough. It could have been completely wacky off the wall, but it was just sort of, it dragged so much between, right at the start, it didn't really get going. There were some jokes and stuff like that. And then you eventually find out what's going on, kind of the plot. And then there's the bits in between, just makes it just drag out for ages and then there's but then there's bits there's like sometimes like 20 minute sequence when things are going and going you're like right okay here we go and that grinds to a halt again and there's just a few little jokes here and there and stuff like that and you can see arnold's having a, a whale of a time he's loving it he's really enjoyed sending himself up and um mm. he's totally bought into the film right and yeah, yeah and he obviously was affected by its lack of success even though it still made eventually made way way over its budget yeah, 80 million to make, and I think it made 137, didn't it? Correct, yeah, yeah. But he was massively depressed about it, and as Gaz and I have seen this week in the new Arnold documentary on Netflix, mm. um, he talks about it in that, and he lets us know he was very, very disappointed about it. Really? Yeah. It's yeah. a shame, I mean, who knew that Jurassic Park was going to grab the zeitgeist in that way and become an all-time classic, mm. you know? Well, I remember, you know, there's like those, again, this is like this, there was those like movie shows, weren't there, for like half an hour on ITV on Saturdays, wasn't there? They do like yeah, a little yeah. review. And I remember I remember all the um, the Jurassic Park ones like I talked at the time, the Gallimimus and all that. And I remember watching the, the Last Action Hero one and where they're touching the screen and it's coming, lighting up and putting their hands through and stuff like that. And the big monster truck doing all that, and I was like, wow, that looks amazing, you know, and stuff like that. A real-life Danny you were. But I would say, as a concept, out of all the shit they're rehashing now in Hollywood, actually Last Action Hero is one that you could do something quite fresh with. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you've got the whole of cinematic history to piss about with. It'd be quite good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be one yeah. that I would rehash. Yeah. Imagine Netflix do a sequel, like, series of six episodes where they do like a different film every week kind of thing. It's fun as fuck. You could do so much with it. Do like a Christopher Nolan ultra serious one and like a, I don't know, like an Austin Powers type piss take and just change, completely change the genre for each episode. That'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? Don't know about Nolan because it'd have to be kid friendly, wouldn't it? But uh, Oh yeah, yeah, I don't mean literally getting just in that overly serious style. Right, right, right. I'm sensing a script here. <laughs> I was going to say about the, the, I think the script is maybe the problem with Last Action Hero because it feels yeah. like too many people have had a crack at it Yeah, and there's no way the same person named a character fucking John Practice and ran that shit joke into the ground oh, that's amazing that joke that's not the same person who uh, named a character Fart and said <laughs> he's going to pass gas one more time because that was actually good. <laughs> yeah, The practice is meant to be bad, isn't it? That's why it's so funny. I hated it. <laughs> oh, I love that. I thought it was brilliant. How, How did you get, get to, to Carnegie Hall? Practice. practice. <laughs> Amazing. Like I said, the ending with death, that feels like something that came in very late. It doesn't feel like it quite gels with the rest of the film properly. We've written ourselves into a hole here. How can we get out? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's the one character that's in public domain that they can just do whatever they want with. 
there's probably quite a lot of restrictions on using some of the bigger name characters like your King Kong or your, your Gary Oldman's Dracula. But still, what, why tease them? Yeah. Do you think Gary Oldman's a character? Gary Oldman's Dracula. He's a real character. Gary Oldman's a real character. <laughs> yeah. Gary, I went and saw Gary every week. He fucking, <laughs> uh, he put fucking cling film on the toilet, fucking geezer. He's a real character. Have you ever heard Kathy Burke talking about Gary Oldman? I can imagine. Very, very funny. Uh, just how needy he is, how he constantly needs validation for what he's doing. And she's just ah, <laughs> oh, fucking hell, I got away with Gal again. Fucking knobhead. <laughs> <laughs> I also feel like this film suffers like an identity crisis and doesn't know who yes. it's for. Yes. It reminds me of, do you remember the orange advert with Steven Seagal where he's chasing the producers around the golf course and he's telling yeah. them that he wants to make he calls it a Kurosawa piece I'm not sure what he oh. means by that a remake of a Akira Kurosawa film maybe okay and wants to be taken more seriously and stuff but you know he's good as an or he was good as an action star you know before he wasn't yeah and then so you've got and I I'm a huge fan a huge fan of Tom Noonan but no fucking 10 year old kid in 1993 would have known who Tom Noonan was but he's like he plays himself in the film as well. Yeah. And I kept thinking, well, couldn't they have got someone kids would know? That's Timmy Mallet. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> the Mallets. Get him in. So Danny's obviously a, a film fan, but he is also a kid. Yeah. In his home, he's got a poster for Fellini's Roma. I was just thinking, who's that for? Yeah. Who's watching it and going, oh yeah, Fellini's Roma? There's no way a kid that young's watching that. Fuck no. It's so weird. I feel like that's the hand of... Maybe Arnold go in like this is the Hamlet joke in there, but maybe he wants to mm. kind of balance that by saying, actually, I am a film fan and I am a fan of Fellini, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. What did you all think of um, Charles Dance's the villain? Brilliant. Love Charles yeah, Dance. Yeah, he's a lot of fun, isn't he? Yeah, he's great. Again, though, kid, kid's not going to know who he is. And he also gets mentioned at the premiere as well, right? Mm. It's probably his first big film, though, wasn't it? Maybe Alien 3 was first. He can't have been a big name by that point. Yeah. Yeah, Alien 3 he did a couple of years earlier. He wore a T-shirt on the set saying, I'm cheaper than Alan Rickman. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once he got wind of it, he, th- he thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I remember watching this film as a kid and actually being genuinely scared by him. He's terrifying. Mm. Some of his glass eyes are quite striking, aren't they? Mm. He's actually got a hell of a physical presence, hasn't he? His, his, the size of him as well. Yeah, yeah, he he feels quite dangerous. Do you know what really bugged me is that bit where he says to the guy, "It's behind the eight ball," and his glass eye isn't an eight ball. Why the fuck not? Or a missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, maybe they run out of money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> costume department goes. All I've got is a seven ball. Oh fuck it. Oh <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. You be cue ball. <laughs> no, you're eight ball. <laughs> and I'll be cue ball. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> hey guys, you must have had a right boner watching this. MC Hammer cameo. I know, yeah, that took me by surprise. Because uh, you get Tina mm. Turner earlier. Is that yeah. another mm. artist? And yeah, MC, MC Hammer popping up. I had zero memory of that whatsoever. Yeah. I thought you were going to say because of Sonya from Mortal Kombat popping up as the love interest for the kid. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Arnold's daughter. Yeah. So, uh, quick round the house. Who? What were your favourite cameos? Danny DeVito. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Really good. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Yeah. I think Tina Turner for me was the one where I just went, fucking hell, because <laughs> it yeah. comes so early. <laughs> and she just passed away as well. Yeah. Obviously, um, seeing Sharon Stone and Robert Patrick in short order was brilliant. Yeah. Oh, um, Little Richard as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mental. Yeah. My little favourite nod, it's not really, a, it's not a cameo, is um, the director of uh, Slater, the, the Jack Slater film is Franco Colombo. Yeah. So I was like, I thought it was ah, funny. that's a nice little nod to his old best mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, is he the guy that moves the car in Pumping Iron? Yeah, that's it, yeah. 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 And uh, blows up a hot water bottle. <laughs> Fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah it's really good I nearly chose a line from that as my favourite Arnold line too yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. there's a few yeah. there's fucking imagine loads. how I feel coming in the yeah. gym yeah. <laughs> coming at home I'm in heaven 
<laughs> right, should we go into favourite sequences? Who's going to start us off? Countertacular, I reckon you're jonesing to get it out. Not a sequence per se, just a little moment when he re- retrieves a cigar from the body bag. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought that was pure Arnie. I loved it. <laughs> My favourite bit for the whole film is the Hamlet trailer. I love it. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. So good. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Not to be. I would watch that film. I would watch the shit out of that film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. I always imagined Paul Verhoeven's Crusades film that was going to star Arnie would have looked and felt yeah. like that short trailer for some reason. Just I, I always had it yeah. in my head when it was uh, stuck yeah. in development hell. Hey, Claudius, you killed my father. Big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And my favourite sequence, it's just a moment again, like Craig's, is when he falls off the skyscraper with the mob funeral on, on top yeah. of it. And he lands in a tar pit. And then about 10 seconds later, he's completely wiped off his face. That's uh, yeah. it's always tickled me that it's With not necessarily even that funny, but it's, it's just it always left a mark on me for, for some reason. Yeah. yeah, that's my favorite sequence of the whole bit as well. Where they go, then they go, got to go up there, and he's like, Oh, just jump in that crane and do this, that, and the other. And if I can, and it's just the whole thing is just batshit, isn't it? Is that an action movie cliche, the rooftop mob funeral? Because the only other thing I can think of that's got one is the Wolverine in Japan. Oh, wow, is that a thing that happens in a lot of films? I don't think so. No. The one funny bit of the other guys is the start when the uh, two typical action heroes, I think one of them is a rock, I can't remember who the other one is, they're on a rooftop. Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson. And they aim for the bushes, <laughs> <laughs> just jump off the roof. <laughs> just just flat on the floor. That's an absolute <laughs> shocking beginning to a film. Yeah. yeah. It's what? so it's really good. Brilliant. I love it. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we move on to favourite lines then? My favourite line is a bit of a thinker. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres, he says, <laughs> as he kicks him in the balls. Yeah. <laughs> and both his balls ache. A couple of acres. Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. It took me, like, you know, four or five seconds. I was like, couple, what? <laughs> I thought that might be Gaz's favourite line, actually. I've got it on my list, but I wasn't going to say it. My favourite line is, uh, is the cop that gets blown into the tree, <laughs> lifts his head and goes, Two days until retirement, and drops his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. My favorite line is one from Benedict, and when they go to the house, and he says, "When the dogs are crowded around, I snap my fingers again, and sometime tomorrow you emerge from several canine recta, or well, you and Toto can return to the land of Oz." Questions? <laughs> I'm just like, oh. It just nails this the delivery of the whole thing. Just loved it. Wow, rector. I've never considered what the plural of rectum is before right now. <laughs> there you Sounds go. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. Rector. Yeah. It was great. I just thought it's like a quintessential uh, British bad guy uh, evil line, isn't it? So Yeah. My favourite line is he's <laughs> it's a car chase sequence and Slater shoots a guy who I missed how it happened, but he winds up with an ice cream corner embedded in the back of his head. Oh and my god! <laughs> his this is my is, least favorite line. I loved it. I iced that guy. The corner phrase. It's the Tacona uh, phrase. Yes. <laughs> that's the bit. That's the bit I didn't like. <laughs> really? Ah, you know magic in your soul. I've written corner phrase because there was an ice cream truck. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> that is really good. It's like a Mr. Freeze line from Batman and Robin. Exactly. It's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, time to kick ice. <laughs> uh, Sam and Puff McBain. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> ice to see you. <laughs> the reception was a little frosty. <laughs> If you're enjoying what you're hearing, 
please rate and review and follow us wherever you're listening to this episode. Also, if you're on social media, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, on at DiabolicalPod, or simply search Diabolical Evil Schemes Done Better. So, what did we all think of Benedict's wicked plot? Ben? I think he's obviously a schemer. Makes sense. He was already planning to usurp the uh, the mafia boss. Mm-hmm. So he had something in motion. And then the ticket kind of fell in his lap. Did he do enough with it? I'd say he lacked a bit of imagination. Mm. When you could have gone to any film and got any bad guy, and you go yeah. and get uh, the, the weird axe guy. Same guy. He's <laughs> mm. already been beaten. Yeah. yeah, it just felt a bit, again, felt like a, a missed opportunity. Yeah. You, I mean, my plan, I, I've uh, I've actually nailed it, obviously. Yeah, of course. So, you know, I'll, I'll give him like six florets of broccoli. Ooh. Generous. I'd go further than saying that he's lacking imagination by picking that guy. I'd say it's a serious lapse in judgment. You know, the guy's clearly one, what, what's, what's, what's some phrases for not all there? One tomato short of a vine. Yeah. <laughs> One picnic short of a lunch date. <laughs> Few pebbles short of a beach. <laughs> One wave short of a shipwreck. One leg short of two legs. Not quite the shilling. Uh, One character short of maximum character limit in a tweet. Wow. Couple of pubes short of a bush. <laughs> One anecdote short of a dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> Half an egg short of an omelette. One omelette short of a breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> he's mad. He's, he's, he's mad. Don't employ him. No. To, and don't ex- don't trust him to carry out your carefully orchestrated hit at a fucking, you know, movie premiere. Makes no sense. He should have got Tom Noonan and got him and Yeah, said, that would have been. Tom Noonan probably would do it. Yeah. What I was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just said, look, just pretend, you know. Just pretend you you're going to be all nice to Arnold, even though he's rained all over your parade and he's treating you like a spouse. <laughs> <laughs> My opinion of Benedict's evil scheme is pretty much the same as as you guys. He's he's got this magical, seems like single street with cinemas just lining the entire way, showing every conceivable film, and he doesn't think outside his own box, and he goes to. Yeah. To Ripper, whose who's whole plan seems to be just throwing an axe. Um, mm. That's his undoing. So, yeah. yeah. A, a lack of true imagination. That's it. Yeah. He's been to all these movies, seen all these baddies, and he's gone, yeah, I'll just stick with somebody that Jack Slater's already beaten. What a shit house. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so, that's the plot. But can we do any better? Who would like to go first? I'll throw it open to you. No, you got to pick. That's the rules. Gaz. <laughs> oh, saving the best for first, is it? <laughs> that classic line. <laughs> I call this my garden fork plan, as it has three Ooh. diabolical prongs, like the very garden fork after which this plan is named. Hence the name because of the fork. Prong one, the leaf collecting prong. Use some of Benedict's considerable wealth to fund a fledgling political career for Arnold Schwarzenegger. We all know that he would go on to be the governor of California over a decade later, and Benedict eyes his ambitions in 93 and facilitates them. Prong two, the muckraking prong. We also know that Arnold had a bit of a wandering eye, no judgment, and a bit of a caddish attitude, some judgment, (laughs) and at least one illegitimate child, huge judgment. (laughs) Therefore, (laughs) Benedict could concoct a bevy of beauteous sex workers to distract the Austrian oak from work. Like Homer Simpson being fed an endless supply of donuts in hell, Arnie's only possible response would be, more. (laughs) Prong three, the soil stabbing prong. Bring forth the change in action movies of the late 90s to noughties early and install serious actors as the leads. Your Tom Cruises, your Brad Pitt, your Matt Damons, yes, even your Keanu Reeves. 
Swaying the public tastes away from the traditional 80s muscle men paradigm means that folk like Schwarzenegger have to retreat to the confines of television, starring in the likes of Homeboys in Outer Space as the funny neighbour or Baby Talk providing the voice of the titular baby. And both of those are real shows, FYI. How you utilise these plans is entirely up to you, of course, but I think that all three are simultaneously viable. A sex scandal never hurt a politician, or even a TV star back then, after all. Once Benedict has stopped Arnie, and therefore Slater, he can put his feet up in the garden and chill with his hoe. His garden hoe. Like the garden fork. Lovely. Well, I, I got one spiky problem with this right away, which is garden forks have four prongs. Oh. Uh, the the fourth prong is um, snapped off. Yeah, somebody was giving it too much welly in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> giving it too much welly. Yeah, it, it caught on one of those <laughs> hidden underground pieces of concrete, and the other three forks were. And as it, oh. as you bent it backwards to uh, remove the earth, it just snapped one of the forks off. Yeah, we'll go with that. I saw it happen. It was it was dreadful. <laughs> Gaz, have you been gardening with a trident? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually used a garden fork, in fairness, hence my uh, lackadaisical attitude to how many prongs they have. <laughs> don't even forks that you eat with have four prongs? Yeah. Ah, probably. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I like to use a spoon, though. That you've whittled into the three-pronged fork. <laughs> Spork. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing like eating a steak with a with a nice big spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what is staring right out of me is we've already talked about how little imagination Benedict has, but we think that he would come up with the idea to start casting serious actors and action movies early. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh... maybe he put his director's eye in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Maybe he's yeah. got like an internet eye, yeah. and but uh, this is like, like the glass. internet that can see into the future. Yeah. You know that, that internet right. that they had for a bit before. But in nineteen ninety three, it'd have been the dial up eye, so he'd be making all these weird <laughs> howling noises. <laughs> <laughs> Benedict, is that you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to sleep. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice indeed. Mm, yeah. I like the uh, the fork analogy. <laughs> the incorrect fork analogy. Yeah. The best kind of analogy. <laughs> I didn't realise each prong of a fork had a different role. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> when you get it from being q or whatever, you've got like a, a baptismal ceremony. You go to the font <laughs> and you say what each prong's for and you put a, a little bit of earth on each prong instead of water. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and then Mary... Or, or, you know, something like that. <laughs> Mary Magdalene, that is. Took a prostitute yeah, I mean, I think you're right. Schwarzenegger would have got away with it, the lusty behaviour back in those days. Mm. But once the Me Too movement hit, he would have been fucked. But I suppose that's not Benedict's problem, is it? No, no. I'd literally visualise him, like, in a chair, like uh, Homer in hell. Being force fed uh, the donuts. <laughs> like donuts so he's, yeah. he's strapped, to a, strapped to a chair with a bomb con, with a conveyor belt of ladies just being <laughs> pushed onto him non-stop. <laughs> more, more. Could I hear your more one more time, please? More. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how I feel? I'm coming all day and night from in hell. Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> no more questions. Right, we shall move on. counter Tacula. Now, I'm taking a gamble here, but luckily I'm going before Ben. I think that he might he might do something similar. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried. Benedict stalks the streets of New York City, taking in the spectacle of unspectacular muggings and the laissez-faire attitudes of the witnesses to his confession of murder. He's sure now, this is not his world. Unconsciously, he reaches into his pocket and fondles the magical stub within. He slides it out and considers its form. As it bristles with energy, he wonders what other worlds it might take him to. Looking up, he clocks the poster for the new Slater movie and comprehends. This is a cinema ticket stub. So it stands to reason it's a ticket into the fantasy worlds of motion pictures. Speaking aloud to himself, he muses, I never thought my life could be anything but catastrophe. But suddenly, 
I begin to see a bit of good luck for me. Because I've got a golden ticket. <laughs> I've got a golden twinkle in my eye. <laughs> you got more than that, fella. What's that? Some kind of glass eyeball there? Come on! Retorts a passing, smart alecky, rotund child. <laughs> Benedict is about to shoot the child when he pauses. <laughs> you boy, who is Jack Slater? What are you, concussed? He's the greatest character in movies already. Yes, I see. And this Arnold Schwarzenegger is the mama who portrays him? Jeez, Lord Ponsington. Yeah, he's the greatest action star in history. Quite. And tell me, in his films, does he ever lose? Never. Benedict has heard enough. No villain from any film will be a match for the Austrian oak. But if he's a thespian, perhaps the promise of starring in some classic cinema will be enough to sway him away from spewing out endless Slater sequels. Benedict approaches Arnie at the premiere, the star initially taking him for the wonderful Charles Dance, of course. Once he gets him alone, he demonstrates the power of the ticket. Arnold finds himself in an impossibly fantastic world. A fat child gave him the idea, explains Benedict, as he proceeds to kill Augustus Gloop, so that Arnold can take over the role. At first, Wonka seems nonplussed at the sight of the hulking child, but is soon able to quip sardonically, as the former Mr. Universe promises, I'll be back, before plunging into the river of chocolate. Role fulfilled, Benedict and Arnold return to reality. Now, it is real-world canon that Arnold Schwarzenegger played Augustus Gloop in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> a wealth of new roles opens up to the star, and he begins to understand the potential of his new friend. They continue to delve into other worlds, usurping stars from roles Arnie wishes he could have portrayed. Finally, he's able to portray Full Metal Jacket's Animal Mother, TV's Incredible Hulk, Die Hard's John McClane, and, confusingly, both Archer and Castor Troy in Face Off. But he doesn't stop there. He snatches the role of Adrian from right under Julia Roberts' cute little nose in Pretty Woman. <laughs> Bumps Alan Ruck to play Ferris Bueller's buddy Cameron and nudges Liam Neeson out of his Oscar-nominated Oscar Schindler role. By the time they're done, Arnold is considered to be as versatile as Meryl Streep and no longer interested in portraying Slater, who simply vanishes into thin air as a consequence. Benedict is now free to live the sweet life in any cinematic universe of his choice, initially spending most of his time in Back to the Future Part 2, laughing joyfully at the tiny pizzas and self-tying shoes. Very nice. Those tiny pizzas are great. Kudos for including the word fondle. <laughs> yeah, fondling the stub in his pocket. You're always yeah. going to get points from me for, uh, <laughs> including, for including that in there. I would have liked to have heard the word caress in that, instead of fondle, to be honest. No. Oh. Yeah. Oh no, I'm a fondle man. Fondling is, is is sounds a bit a bit shady. That's why I like it. But caressing something, I had caressed her naked bosom. I had dance in my head when I was writing it, and I feel like he'd say fondle instead of caress. Charles Dance. I love the New York kid. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what inspires you to go down the Willy Wonka route? Golden ticket. The what? <laughs> The golden ticket. The golden ticket. <laughs> he never thought that he could fly over the moon in ecstasy, but nevertheless, nevertheless. it's there that he is shortly about to be because he's got, he's a, golden got a golden ticket. ticket. <laughs> he's got a golden chance to make his way. <laughs> a golden ticket, it's going to be a golden day. I think Arnold's really got the chops for some of those roles that you've listed there. Uh, the one that particularly stuck out was Oscar Schindler. <laughs> <laughs> come with me if you want to live right it doesn't matter whether he has or not because he doesn't have to get cast in them they simply take him into the film take out whoever you know they take out the character Oscar uh, Schindler they don't have to take out yeah. Liam Neeson and then Arnold just plays him uh, and then for all the world to see he, he just did always play him I think he'd be alright as Oscar Schindler he's you know he's he's got the, the German accent and stuff like that and, right, right. and his hulking frame and stuff like that obviously you think maybe he's going to be a a bad guy and stuff like that but then actually he's a big big soft soft shite isn't he really and wants to save loads of people yeah. so I, th I think I think he'd be brilliant I'd love to see a, a, a remake of that <laughs> it wasn't an accident that I picked that role of all roles <laughs> it's really good 
I like that. I can't imagine that final scene where he's getting shepherded away, crying that he didn't save enough people. I can't quite oh. imagine Arnie pulling that off personally. Right. <laughs> he just goes... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe even at first Spielberg's confused and he's thinking, I can't remember why I cast him now. But it's too late. This, the film exists in that version now. <laughs> so how does it work? Is it not just the the single print is affected? It's all the prints, all the copies throughout the world. I think all the prints, yeah. Yeah, that's the way I took it. Okay. It's a bit far fetched. Mm-hmm. I don't think they are. <laughs> it's a bit far fetched. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very, very damning report from, from Gaz. That might be swaying me. You had me right up until you said golden ticket. And then I was like, lost. You lost me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the parents' response to films you don't understand. Oh, it's a bit far fetched. Yeah. <laughs> a bit far fetched. I can That's buy the talking cartoon cat. <laughs> I can see the talking cartoon cat and I can buy the magical ticket, but every print. (laughs) (laughs) This is going to be very important now, Count Tacular. Yeah. Uh, It's probably not fair ahead of Turner's Palm, but if you can do an impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger saying that he feels sorry for Wonka because it's going to cost him a fortune fudge, you might have got my point. (laughs) I almost wrote that, didn't I? (laughs) Feel sorry for Wonka. It's going to cost him a fortune in fudge. (laughs) (laughs) Beautiful. Oh, that would be so good. Uh, Have you seen um, some of the deep fakes of Arnold in other movies? Like in Titanic, getting painted by uh, Jack and stuff like that. Yeah. (laughs) It's fucking good. (laughs) It's amazing. I need to rewatch Titanic. I was planning on watching Titanic, and then they took it off Disney when Mm. Avatar came out in a cinema and he took that off as well because they re-released Titanic, didn't they? Yeah. So I want to see that again. I famously have only ever watched the scene where you see Kate Winslet boobs. It's the best scene. That's it. Yeah, but you've seen it enough times. You've seen it more than two and a half hours worth of time. So it counts as you've watched it all. <laughs> it was still on VHS then, so I just fast-forwarded through, you know, seconds through and stop. <laughs> What's that? And then stop. Whenever anybody else watched it, they were like, why Why is it always on this scene? Just at the end of that scene, somebody <laughs> kicks one of its tits out. <laughs> so that's the only bit of Titanic I've ever seen. i never watched a film. <laughs> this VHS box is all sticky. God. <laughs> Any further questions? No. Thank you very much. Oh, we shall have... Hmm, who should we have now? I'm going to go for... Hello, famous actor and award-winning beefcake Arnold Schwarzenegger speaking. Oh, hi Arnold. Acclaimed movie director Steven Spielberg here. I've been thinking, it's crazy that we've never worked together. I'd like to remedy that, and I have the perfect part for you. I'm at Carmine's. Come down and we'll discuss it over stogies and steaks. Sure, I'll be right there. Excellent work. I don't know why you wanted me to pretend to be this Spielberg guy, Mr. Benedict. I'm just a simple tax assessor from Cook County, Illinois. Yes, and you've outlived your usefulness. (laughs) When Arnold arrives at Carmine's, he finds the lights off but the door ajar. He shrugs and enters. Hello, Stephen. Are you there? The door closes behind him. A single light flickers on. Benedict emerges from the shadows. Hello, Mr. Schwarzenegger. You have been a stone in my shoe for too long. Fortunately for me, you have wronged a number of my brothers in arms throughout your many years as an action hero and they are even more desperate for revenge than I. What are you talking about? Allow me to demonstrate. Perhaps you will remember the poor fellow you beheaded in Conan the Barbarian. Thulsa Doom steps out of the shadows. James Earl Jones, good to see you. Hey, is this like a roast? In a way. And you will, of course, remember your bodybuilding nemesis, Lou Ferrino and his overbearing father. The pair emerges from the gloom. 
cracking their knuckles. Hey, Louis. And of course, Dr. Noah Barnes, the morally bankrupt scientist you refused to give up your baby to in junior. <laughs> a dead ringer for Frank Langella steps out holding a scalpel. Not forgetting all these other enemies you've inconvenienced over the years. Arnie looks round to see T-1000, the Predator, Bennett from Commando, and finally Captain Freedom from Running Man. The circle closes in on Arnie, and the curtain comes down on his illustrious career. Very nice. Now I'm imagining X going to give it to you playing, and they're just kicking him on the floor and spitting on him, like in that episode of Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> What I think you've done here is I think you've made the same mistake as the villain in our very second ever episode, Demolition Man. You've hired in a bunch of characters you can't control. I think the Predator is going to kill everyone in the room <laughs> before Arnie even gets there. <laughs> you imagine saying to him, saying to him uh, now this is a surprise party. I want you to hide behind the curtains until Arnold Schwarzenegger gets here. <laughs> say surprise! And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to fucking throw Charles Dance on the fire and he'll never meet Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I think once the Predator sees the length of Charles Dance's barrel, he's going to be okay with him. He's going to give him the hunter's respect. He'll just tip his little head to him. Here, Predator, have a look at my barrel. Look at this. Come over here. <laughs> Isn't there a plot point in the Predator that he only attacks the characters that are armed yeah. and leaves the woman alone because she doesn't have a gun? <laughs> Possibly. I believe so. Other than that, I like um, that you think Frank Langella's character from Junior would kill him, and so would <laughs> Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> <laughs> Big Louis. <laughs> you called him Lou Ferrigno as well. <laughs> What's yeah. his name? Lou Ferrigno. I think it, I think it's Ferrigno. No, it's Italian. Ferrigno. It's Ferrigno. It's probably Ferrigno. No, you think he's a um, Steve like Coogan character? Ferrigno. Uh, what's his name? Tony Ferrigno. Tony Ferrigno. Yeah. Tony Ferrigno. <laughs> Tony. What the fuck? Tony Ferrigno go. got a chip on his shoulder about Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> this is a song about the woman I love and my wife. I call it <laughs> Man Sandwich. <laughs> Butter me up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it is Lou Frito. It's It's a silent G. I think you, you should pronounce it that way, but I don't think he does professionally. Yeah, uh, right. It's like this whole Galifianakis debacle all over again, isn't it? <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> guided by his father, Lou Frigno would do anything he's told, as you saw in The Pumping Iron. Yeah, actually, yeah. He does listen to his dad. Also, I like the uh, clever use of... Spielberg's character from Blues Brothers. Thank you. Spielberg. Very nice. <laughs> nice callback as well. Any further questions? I have nothing of value to add. <laughs> we could probably copy and paste that little comment from Gaz and just use it in the rest of the, the episodes we record. <laughs> <laughs> I might go back and edit it into previous episodes. As well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's my plan. Who's the biggest villain in Hollywood and has the most to gain from Schwarzenegger's downfall other than Benedict? Hitler? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget he ever made films, did he? It was Goebbels that did the films, isn't it? He was in The Great Dictator, wasn't he? <laughs> yes, Mickey Mouse. The evil empire of Disney <laughs> is jonesing for a big hit. But Arnold is hogging all the limelight. Benedict approaches Mickey back in the movie world and offers to get Mickey whatever Disney henchman he wants back into the real world to get Schwarzenegger. Probably Bluto, Gaston, Cruella de Vil, Jafar, Hady, Sher Khan, Scar, Syndrome, and a load of others, just to boot. They lie in wait in the screen of the premiere of the film Jack Slater 4. As all the audience and cast and crew settle down for the film, the rotten Disney baddies leap from the screen. The theatre is overwhelmed with some of the cruelest characters the world has ever seen, and none of the audience stand a chance. K 
Captain Hook and his pirates bar the doors while the rest of the gang make their move. Sher Khan and Scar circle Arnie, then they tear him to bits. Having completed his dastardly scheme, Benedict returns to Mickey Mouse and they plot their business together. So it's a similar in the vein of yours there, Ben. <laughs> when you said yours, I was like, okay, we're on the same kind of wavelength. Mm, yeah. And it's kind yeah. it's kind of well, three of us are linked there, really, Count Attacular Ben and myself, really. We're sort of all sort of diving into the uh, characters. Yeah. Lion King was nineteen ninety four. Yeah. I thought it was a bit obvious to uh, just get a load of other movie characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, no. Hence the uh, <laughs> Garden Fork. <laughs> yeah. The real villain of the piece, the Garden Fork. So who did you have? Shere Khan? Oh, I had loads of them. Cruella de Vil, Jafar. Baloo? I imagine Baloo would be quite fierce. Baloo? Just scratching his back on Slater's corpse. <laughs> like DiCaprio getting fucked up by the bear. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So, questions. Is the witch from like the evil queen from Snow White there? She might have been. I would just I just listed a bunch of villains I could remember, but she could. It was up to Mickey Mouse whoever went there. I reckon Arnie would love a good apple. A good apple, yeah. But I was I was kind of wondering, like, with their superpowers and stuff like that, and like and their magic and things like like Jafar had, would it work in the real world, or would could they just simply like jump out and overwhelm him and do stuff? And I thought, well, if it's, if it's something like that, Captain Hook and his pirates can sort of do the. Oh yeah, that's what I was wondering. I wasn't. Under, I, I, I guess it's all. Do you know what I mean? I find it a bit Jafar fetched. Oh, nice. Because Slater, when he's in the real world, <laughs> Slater in the real world gets shot and it's killing him like it would a real person, right? He has to return to the fantasy world to survive that shot. So there's gone. So there's gone. He's left. The joke was too good. Just that was a fucking appalling joke. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've done you've done one for so many episodes now. <laughs> what you say it's a bridge too Jafar. <laughs> it's a good point that you raised against yourself there, Turner, which I wouldn't have thought of if you hadn't if you hadn't questioned yourself, I wouldn't have questioned you. I don't know. It's it's all up for debate really, isn't it? Yeah. It's not it's not I don't think Maybe if cartoons came into the real world, they would just turn into paint and just fall on the floor. No, they've got the golden ticket, so it's no. fine. No. I've seen Roger Rabbit. Yeah. They exist. Yeah. They coexist. You can only real world tunes oh, with Speaking of Roger, Roger Rabbit, listen to our Roger Rabbit episode. <laughs> <laughs> you got to use dip or that gun with the talking old timey Wild West bullets. But yeah, I guess really if the cartoons exist, maybe their powers will still exist as well. I don't know. But with the gun at the end, Benedict doesn't not reload the gun. He just he just tricks him doesn't he and stuff so i'm like mm. i was i was 50 50 but i just thought well, i'll just use the characters as they are their physical attributes to to do stuff and that's why i just thought i'd try and avoid that curve that particular curve ball. get the uh the siamese cats from lady in the tramp oh you mean the, the, face the horrible stereotypical chinese <laughs> cats get the racist from, cats, yeah, from, the racist cats, racist cats from, from lady in the, the tramp cats. <laughs> <laughs> so in all yeah. seriousness, and this is going to sound Go on, ridiculous then. following up that statement with this, <laughs> I think your weak link is Mickey Mouse, isn't it? Because he's more of a petty criminal oh, no, than he's, a he's, murderer. He's absolutely <laughs> pure evil. He just wants to dominate all... Um, he, he's like the, the poster boy for Disney, and Disney just want to take over the world. I don't think that's true. I think that he wants... Basically, he wants food, and he wants <laughs> like to break into someone's house and use their <laughs> swimming pool. He wants to eat <laughs> out of the bins. Yeah, he's not He's not an evil character. He just... Are you confusing him with a raccoon? <laughs> no. If you ever watch Mickey Mouse, he's basically... His character's like he's a hobo and he just goes around like trying to get free food and shit. It's, it's really quite funny. I thought he wanted to sail tugboats. I thought that was his main name. Steamboat Willie. <laughs> yeah, that's one uh, thing they did. Yeah. The likeness of that uh, runs out this year, doesn't it? Or something like that. The copyright to that is up. Mm. Get ready for some horror films with Mickey mm. Mouse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho. I'm going to chop your fucking head off. Ho, ho. <laughs> yeah, you don't think Mickey Mouse is evil? I personally, that's not his character in my experience. I think you're confusing Mickey Mouse with Disney. <laughs> 
I thought you were going to say with Top Cat. Yeah, it's a devil. You got the South Park Mickey Mouse in your head. That's what yeah. you've got. But yeah, oh, that's yeah. it. He, he's, he's evil in mm. that as well. But I, it's Disney as, a, as, a, as an empire. They're evil. And, and Mickey Mouse is at the top, isn't he? It's Michael Eisner used to be, top isn't it? And he's, he really is Mickey pulling the strings in the behind. Of when uh, Lucas sold Lucasfilm to Disney, and like a week later, he called them white slavers. White slavers? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mental. And then a few years later, they just let him come back to Star Wars behind the scenes. Pretty funny. He must be laughing his head off. It's to uh, name the odd character on a TV show. This one's Flimpy Flim Flim. <laughs> <laughs> that one's Blorpo. Oh, wow, George. <laughs> Giving us gold. How do you do it? How do you do it? <laughs> Congratulations, Lucas. You've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> These happy days are yours and mine. <laughs> Was Sebastian the crab there? Uh, no, he's, he's, a, he's a goodie. <laughs> yeah, but that would have distracted Arnie. Arnie would be going, it's a talking crab. And then the rest of you could have blindsided him. Ah, oh, it's got my fucking nuts in his claws. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not including Sebastian. I don't think he'd do that. I think he's got a heart, he's got a heart of gold, that, that, that crab. Well, then you've lost my vote. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to keep faith in the goodness in uh, humanity, yeah. haven't you? Sebastian's one of the <laughs> As good I guys. say daily, in crab we trust. <laughs> <laughs> in brief summation of the plans, we had Gaz's fork plan, sex scandal, serious actor scam. Or we had Count Attackula's golden ticket, Arnie Wonka insert into any film for a glorious career. Ben's plan was assemble an array of Arnie's movie nemesis to attack him and finish him once and for all. And we had my Disney character assassination. But there can't be only one winner. Count Attackula, who have you voted for? Well, it gave me memories, memories. formula-wise for the Ace Ventura episode in in thinking this is a plan that is actually, you know, once you scratch beneath the crazy surface, quite uh, elegant and would work. So I've gone for Gareth's fork. This three-pronged attack of political and uh, philandering. <laughs> I think he's got legs. Gaz, who have you voted for? Well, I went for the most plausible of the three film-based plans which to me was countertacular oh okay point a piece at the moment this is interesting this is interesting okay ben <laughs> please reveal your vote well he's played me like a fiddle and he? he know he knows my buttons and he's pressed all of them it's counting spatulas. <laughs> <laughs> i was honestly quite surprised you didn't put the golden ticket thing together didn't didn't even enter my mind as soon as you no. came up i was like oh brilliant <laughs> and it looks like i'm gonna be the only one who doesn't get a point this week because i have voted for ben oh, oh just me on my old lonesome here don't worry about me i'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> gareth once you've uh discombobulated and uh constricted the latest scores can you let us know how's that affected the leaderboard Well, I've just crunched the numbers oh, and yeah. I can reveal. In first place with 17 points is Counter Tacular. Joint second place with 12 points each is Ben and myself. And in final place, one point behind is Adam with 11 points. Oh, oh the worm has turned. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be pretty funny if we got to a point where I. Was unassailable again. No, it wouldn't. Like, wait, no, it wouldn't. I'd no, laugh it wouldn't. my ass off. Be fucking shit. <laughs> just on a on a completely separate note, Gaz Turner, just check WhatsApp. I've just sent you. <laughs> <a second. laughs> oh, oh yeah. I haven't really, Gaz. Stop looking. Uh, yeah, I see what you're getting at. Yeah, 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 yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. I think we're quite a way off that, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine ever getting to that point. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think it could happen with the uh, the one the. Uh, point thing. No, we've got like six episodes left, have we? More than that? Seven? Yeah, we'll be flying. 
Yeah, seven, I think. Seven left, yeah. Yeah, plenty of points to be had, boys. So, Ben, you're picking the film next week. What's it going to be? Next week, we're going to be watching a film you may well have heard of in the past, directed by a little fellow called Irvin Kirshner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. It's The Empire Strikes Back. Ooh, the it's, it's the big, big tamale. Oh, it's it's Star Wars. Is it the biggest oh. we've done? Oh, it's big. <laughs> it's big, <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not in <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to the end of this week's episode thank you for listening and I hope you've enjoyed yourselves as much as we have if you have please leave us a five star review wherever you get your podcast from don't forget to follow us so that you never miss an episode why not share us with a friend an acquaintance or colleague follow us across social media on at Diabolical Pod so until next time, dear listener, I don't care who does what to your Hershey Highway. Just give me a couple of links that I can go back and put in just some kind of generic links, Turner. Uh, what, like... Uh... So it's something like, that part's finished. Let's go on to the next part. Well, I'm glad that's over and done with. Let's move on. Good. Give me a, give me another variation. Oh, I thought you'd never stop talking there. Should we uh, move on now? Good. Give, give one way where the last thing that was said was really funny, but now you want to go into something more serious. Ha, 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 ha. In serious thoughts, uh, let's uh, <laughs> talk about the favourite lines. <laughs> McBain plays a nerd in one of his films as well, and it's just... He says, um, my son comes home from college and I'm har- horrified to discover that he's a nerd. He says, um, it sounds like a great comedy, and he's like, comedy? <laughs> <laughs> and I did watch it in two bits, but the first bit was like an hour, but that's because I had to go. It was like school time. Just for the listeners out there in Podland, I just want to explain when Craig says it's school, he is still taking his final year of high school. It's well, you're <laughs> 25th grade. He's been held back in, for in 20 my years. dreams. <laughs> I've never stopped going to high school in my dreams. Sorry, I called you Craig there, Countacular, you handsome, handsome bastard. I could pass for high school though. <laughs> in your dreams. That's what you've been told anyway. <laughs> I can play anywhere from 15 to 40. Whatever <laughs> you can say whatever the hell you want. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Come shut. <laughs> Not trying to be funny. Not trying to give anyone the worst day of their job. Do any of those fuckers come out of the walls and do a huge cub shot? <laughs> <laughs> Did you make any new friends, son? Big gun, it was called. Rubbish. Rubbish song. Rubbish. <laughs>